Hi everyone. This is a really short video as far as getting into multiplication and scaling. Um, I do need you guys to know how to do this as, as, as it is a fifth grade standard, but um, I'm going to show you just a couple short examples of what they're asking. Basically what they want you to do is they want you to predict without doing an algorithm what will happen to your whole number when you multiply it by a certain number. So look at the board in my example. At the bottom I have two equations. I have 2 times 1 half and then I have 2 times 1 and 2 thirds. So in the first equation, in that example, I am multiplying 2 by a number less than 1. And the result always will be that my answer will be smaller than the actual, than 2. So let me go over that just one more time because this does get a little tricky. So basically, these are the rules. And what they're saying is, is if you multiply a whole number by a fraction or a number that's less than 1, because isn't a half less than one. A half isn't even one whole yet. So anytime you multiply a whole number by anything less than one, your answer is always going to be smaller than the number two or smaller than whatever you're multiplying it by. The same rule applies, but it's opposite when you multiply by something bigger than one. When I multiply two times a, a mixed fraction or anything bigger than the number one, I'm always going to get a number bigger than my whole number, which is a 2. I know that sounds weird, but I'm going to show you some examples and hopefully it'll click because in today's lesson, it's going to ask you to do this without even multiplying. They're just going to ask you to look at what you're multiplying by and decide if it will be smaller than 2 or bigger than 2. What will the answer be? You're predicting the answer by following these two rules. So here we go. The rule is, is if you take any number and multiply it by a number less than one, you're going to have an answer that's smaller than this number here. It's going to be smaller than two. And that is true because if I take two and multiply it times a half and I go ahead and multiply straight across, I would have a one under here, two times one is two and one times two is two and two divided by two is one. Isn't one smaller than my whole number that I was multiplying? So that's why that rule applies. I multiplied by something smaller than a one whole. It was just a half. So if I multiplied it times a half, if I multiplied it times a third, if I multiplied it times four out of six, if I multiplied it times one out of eight, all of those fractions are smaller than one the rule says that every time my answer will be smaller than this whole number. Now let's see the example of my answer is going to be bigger than my 2 or my 3 or my 4, whatever I'm multiplying here. If you multiply by something bigger than 1, this is bigger than 1 because I have 1 and 2 thirds, right? If I prove this, I would have 2 over 1 times... 5 over 3, because remember, I have to get rid of that mixed fraction, and I would get 10 over 3. If I divide 10 divided by 3, I get 3 and 1 third. And isn't 3 and 1 third bigger than my 2? So the rule applies every time. So what you're going to see is you're going to be predicting. So let's do some predictions here. I know that's a lot of information, and it seems kind of strange. But once you get the hang of it, this will be easy cheesy. So we're going to make some predictions. What will happen when I multiply 4 times 1 third? Okay, so they're going to say, is your answer going to be smaller than 4, equal to 4, or bigger than 4? The only time it'll be equal is if you're multiplying it times one, because that's the identify that's the property of um, addition, multiplication. Anything times one is itself. So that's the only time it's going to be equal. So you're going to predict: is it going to be bigger than four or smaller than four? It all depends on what you're multiplying by. Is this number smaller than one or bigger than one? It's smaller. 
So the rule says that if you multiply anything times a number that is smaller than one, you're always going to have a smaller answer, right? So you are gonna say less than. Let's prove that that's true. If I multiply this, my answer is gonna be smaller than four. So if I multiply across, I'll get four over three, which I need to divide because it's improper. And I, sure enough, I get one and one third as my answer. One and one third is way smaller than four. So it is true. What if I took four and multiplied it times anything bigger than one? What would happen? Well, what if I just multiplied it times a whole number? Four times two is eight. That applies. What if I did four times one and three fourths? Because this is bigger than a whole, it's bigger than one, I should get a bigger number as my answer. I should get a bigger number compared to four. So you're able to predict what's gonna happen to your answer based on what kind of number you're multiplying by. So this is a good trick to help you as you move forward in practicing multiplying fractions. It's just something to have in your back pocket and understand what's happening to a whole number when you multiply it times a certain fraction. If the fraction is smaller than one, it's gonna be a smaller answer than your whole number. If the multiplication is, if the number is bigger than one, it's your answer is gonna be bigger than that whole number. And we're proving it here, right? Because let's go back, what if we did four times a half? A half is smaller than one, which means my answer is gonna be smaller than my four, and I can prove that if I multiply this across, I would have four divided by two, which is two. My answer would be two, and two is smaller than four. What if I multiply times something bigger than one? Then my answer should be bigger than four. Let's prove it. Well, this would come out to four over one times seven over four, and then I would multiply 28 divided by four, which is Seven, and seven is bigger than four. So this is really just kind of a scaling application that you guys can use to help you as you are seeing what happens when you multiply by any type of number or fraction that's smaller than one or bigger than one.